What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Brad, this is Firewood at the Furnace and Thanksgiving is on the way. We are here in this uh, holiday week coming up to the Thanksgiving weekend which leads into Christmas of course. But if you're anything like my wife, Christmas has already been here since right after Halloween. Uh, it seems like we decorate earlier and earlier every year. But anyway, Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, as you know, is Black Friday, one of the biggest shopping days of the year. And although most people don't go shopping to the malls anymore, a lot of it's done online, uh, I still think a lot of you probably are looking for gift ideas for this year. And I've got the perfect solution for that guy or that buddy of yours who might need a gift idea, so stick around. So I had a company reach out to me about a month or so ago uh, to see if I would be interested in testing or reviewing any of their power equipment. Now, if you've watched any of the videos before, the video reviews and the product endorsements that I do are only things that I find that I can use that will benefit me here in the wood yard and with my operation. So I do turn a lot of stuff down. This company reached out and offered a um, couple different things, a mini chainsaw, they have snow blowers, they have uh, electric weed eaters, gas powered weed eaters, they've got uh, all kinds of stuff. And one of the products that I've been thinking about looking for, for a variety of reasons, which, which I'll explain, is a blower. And I need a blower because not only this time of year when all the leaves are falling and the yards are a mess around my mom's house and around my house and everybody's yards are just covered with leaves, uh, we've got this grapple truck on the way. Chaz, my tree guy, and I have uh, got a, a grapple truck that if you've been following the story, you know we lost the motor out of the truck so a new motor is getting put into it. But eventually, when that truck is in operation and in service, we're gonna need to keep some equipment on that truck as we go to these jobs and pick, pick up logs because the plan is, is his tree crews are gonna do the tree jobs during the day, and when they get done, they will put the logs for the sawmill, the firewood logs, things like that, along the road or along the driveway for me to come by uh, later on in the afternoon to pick up those logs. Now obviously that crew will already be gone, so the cleanup will be my responsibility. Part of cleanup is raking, having a blower, and getting the debris that might come off, the bark, the leaves, the, the brush, things like that off the customer's property. So a blower is something that's going to have to be on board that truck. It will greatly help me here at the yard at times too when I'm cleaning up the driveway and things of that nature. So that's, long story short, that's what I got. I've got the Wild Badger. 53cc backpack blower and we're going to unbox this thing here today I'm going to go over it a little bit with you show you some of the features talk about a deal that you can get this week leading up to Black Friday uh, if it's something that you might be interested in now would be the time to grab a hold of it so let's get this thing opened up and check it out All right, so not only are these things good for just leaves, like you saw me tromping through there, uh, it's also good for uh, lights, uh, gravel, snow, any debris in your yard. Uh, I've had a I've had a blower before, but I've never had a backpack blower of this capacity. I've had a, sm a smaller one, electric powered blowers, things like that, and they were good good for leaves but normally don't have enough power to do much else. So I'm curious to see how this bad boy is gonna work. Uh, comes with obviously the blower. It's got your flex tube here, which will attach to the blower right off the motor here. And then your extension tubes, which we'll see how they go together. Put those on, I see some hose clamps here, which goes on the flex tube and of course, your instruction manual. So let's get this together. I'll uh, tell you what I th what I think, what I found out, and we'll get this th get some fuel in it and see how it does. Thank you. 
So in this part of the assembly right here, I would recommend that you put the throttle assembly onto the first tube before you attach it to the flex tube. The reason for that is if you attach the tube to the flex tube first, you're going to have a tough time getting the throttle assembly over top of the tube. It's got a slight channel on it that the throttle assembly locks onto that tube. So you can see right here I'm putting the tube on the throttle assembly first and then attaching it to the flex tube. Uh, that's just something that I figured out while I was assembling it that uh, might save you some time and or aggravation. So uh, other than that, it went together very, very smooth. Well, one thing that I can see already that I really like is how long that tube ended up being. There's three sections to that tube. They lock in positively with like almost like a cam locking system. You slide it on, you rotate it about 90 degrees and it locks into place. But then you've also got these locking screws that you just tighten down and that will keep it all together for you. But the length of it is going to be really good because you can reach out in front of you. You don't, if, especially if you're a taller person, the shorter tubes that I've used before, sometimes you kind of got to bend over or squat at the knees a little bit to get down to move heavier stuff. The trigger assembly on here, uh, something that I noticed about that is not only do you have the trigger assembly, but you've also got a thumb switch here that will lock the throttle. So all the way up is your stop position to shut the motor off. But while you're starting it, if you want to give it a little throttle, you can pull that down. It will hold the throttle in position for you. These, uh, this backpack system, it already to me looks very, very comfortable. Heavy padding, not only on the shoulder straps, but also on the back area of the backpack itself. It's also got a waistband strap and I know from personal experience, the waistband strap, although you may think you don't need something like this just for a backpack carrier, but if you're going to be using this for any length of time, uh, the proper way to use this waist strap is to allow the weight of the machine to sit on your hips. The, the, the shoulder strap simply hold it, hold the top of the machine up against your shoulder, but the weight, the bulk of the weight of the machine should be carried on your hips rather than hanging on your shoulders. And I know that from carrying uh, breathing apparatus through the fire department in my years of fire department that technology has developed because when I first started, we didn't have the waist strap. It simply went over your shoulders and across your chest and your shoulders were killing you after a couple, couple air packs going through with that weight hanging on you. So use the waist strap and allow it to, the weight of the machine to hang on your hips. Although the machine is not that heavy at all, it's a pretty lightweight machine, but as with anything else, if you do something long enough, eventually you're gonna have those pinch points or points where things start to hurt a little bit. So this machine runs on 50 to one ratio, so you can use the same fuel that you use in your saws with it. Uh, the fuel tank is right here on the bottom and it holds 31.1 ounces of fuel. So that will give you 50 to 60 minutes of solid run time there. So you can, you can be running this for about an hour at a time before you need to stop for fuel. Uh, it's got anti-vibration dampers on the bottom here. You can see these rubber mounts where the motor mounts to the frame itself. Anti-vibration technology is a huge help. And it's 853 CFMs and that equates to about 174 mile an hour of air blowing through this machine. So we're gonna hit, go ahead and fuel it up now. We're gonna see how well it starts on the very first pull. It's gonna have fuel in it for the very first time and we will start blowing some leaves. So I don't know if you can see that tag that's hanging there on the side, but it says that when you put the fuel in it, to push the primer balls, about seven times in the choke position. Your standard uh, way of starting a two-stroke engine is filling a little bit of fuel there, but I got enough in it to do what I need to do, I think. So we'll get this started, see what it does. Primer ball is right here on the side. Push that seven times, it says. And the primer ball's full there, so that's seven times exactly. 
We'll move the choke up, see what it does. All right, just three pulls. One thing you want to make sure of is that you have the throttle set in the position where it's not on stop. So if that's in the stop position, you're obviously not going to be able to get it running. But only three pulls after the very first bit of fuel in it. It's pretty good. It's idling good. Let's put it on my back and see what it does. Pretty, pretty good. I gotta tell you, it's lightweight. Didn't hurt my back. Probably ran it there for 20 minutes or so. Padding was really, really good on the shoulders. Throttle, was, th throttle response was really good. I had no problems coming up off an idle. And when I let off the trigger, it went right back down to an idle, never stumbled. Motor ran good. So, like I said, I like the long tubes that come out at the end. You, can, you saw how far I was able to blow out in front of me. I wasn't walking right on top of what I was trying to blow. I was able to keep it a good three, four feet out in front of me. So that worked out really good. The yard looks fantastic now. Mom's going to be happy. But let me tell you about the deal that you can get this week if you're interested in something like this machine. All right, so right now on Amazon, and I'll include a link in the description of this video so you can click right on and get right to this exact machine. You can pick this up through Thanksgiving with the Black Friday deal uh, for $204.34. That's 15% 15 less than the machine is normally uh, sells for. And if you compare this machine, the size of the motor, the size of the uh, CFMs, and the miles per hour, that the air comes out the end of the tube. If you compare this to other similar machines, such as a Husqvarna or a Tro Troy built, something like that, uh, you're gonna save yourself anywhere from 60 to $100 uh, by purchasing this particular machine. Um, I think it, it worked really well. We will continue to use it. You're gonna be seeing it on future videos once this grapple truck gets in service, like I said. I actually just saw a message from Chaz a few minutes ago uh, with an update on that so I haven't looked at it yet but hopefully it's good news 
uh, but that this will be a permanent fixture inside of that truck as part of the equipment that we use to help clean up those logs and clean up uh, tree jobs. So this is going to get its work out. We're going to put it through its paces and I will keep you updated on it. Uh, but like I said, the link for this is in the description of the video and you can get it on sale now uh, as a Black Friday deal. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, tomorrow is the big day. Don't overdo it. <laughs> Uh, and give thanks to your family and friends, and I hope you all have a great week. We will see you next week three times, because on next week, we've got Wednesday's video, Thirsty Thursday the next day, and the first Friday of December is the very next day. So three days in a row, you're going to get a little bit of overload of firewood at the furnace. So take care, everybody, and we'll see you next week.